guys hey everyone welcome back to my channel welcome if you're new new here on this channel we try to cover all things reality tv news and gossip as well as trending topics celebrity news entertainment news and we're going to be talking about gypsy rose blanchard and at the end of this video i will do a quick update as to what went what went on with me earlier today when i was on a live stream i will give you guys a quick update for anybody that is wondering or concerned that'll be at the end of this video so we all know Gypsy Rose Blanchard got out of prison December 2023 after serving like eight, seven and a half, eight years of a 10 year sentence for the unaliving of her mother, Diddy Blanchard. Um, some would call it like conspiracy or I think she actually just got charged with the unaliving because in the state where it happened, they don't have like the conspiracy to commit it. You just get charged with the crime. Either way, she was sentenced to 10 years. She served seven and a half, eight years. She got out. When she got out, she went home to her husband, Ryan Anderson, who is a teacher in Louisiana. He is actually a special education teacher. Um, I said this, and I, I was hoping I would not be right, but I said it from the beginning. Whenever I heard that Gypsy was married and coming home a married woman, I thought that's not going to be a good idea because she has literally never had a life where she just had total freedom. So coming in out of prison into a relationship where you can't have that freedom, I just didn't really see how it was going to work. And unfortunately, it didn't work because she filed for a divorce just last month or just earlier this month. So in this situation, it's kind of wild because they went on this press tour right after she got out of prison. And it seemed like everything was great. It seemed like they got along well. Um, up until towards the end, they did an interview and everybody could see that something was amiss. Ryan did not look happy. Gypsy did not look happy with Ryan. And some red flags were noticed in one of their later interviews. Um, but either way, she filed for divorce. The same day that the news broke that she had separated from Ryan, pictures came out with her, of her, with her ex-fiance, Ken Erker. And the photos that came out were not just photos of them hanging out. These were photos of the two hand in hand. Give me a second, guys. Okay. So it's very different once you live with someone. Exactly. So a lot of people has been wondering what went wrong between Ryan and Gypsy. There's been whispers allegedly from like her side that he was controlling. He was jealous. He did not like for her to spend time with her dad, her stepmom. So whispers of that have been out and about. Well, you guys, TMZ just released another article that I'm like, in the article, in the article, Gypsy says that she felt like Ryan reminded her of her mom. Now, listen, listen, we all know whenever Gypsy got out of jail and pictures of Ryan came about, people were, were saying that he reminded them of her mom, like his actual look. But she is saying some of the things that he did and the way that he lived at home is what reminded her of her mom. So I'm going to go over this really quickly. Gypsy Rose Blanchard's blow-up fight with her husband, with her husband Ryan, was over his food hoarding, hoarding, right? So he like was a food hoarder. Let me tell you something. Let pandemic 2020 happen again, and you are gonna wish your husband was hoarding food. I'm telling you, food, toilet paper, beans, anything. When you go through a pandemic, I think you're like, you know what? Yeah, let me just. Maybe that was his idea. Like, you know what? I know people that they buy in bulk and they save food. But either way, it wasn't just that. Uh, it was more as to like he kept food in his refrigerator longer than I guess she wanted and things like that. So Gypsy Blanchard and Ryan Anderson got into a major fight about his food hoarding ways before they split. Sources close to Gypsy tell TMZ that Gypsy wasn't fully aware of Ryan's hoarding issues regarding food before moving in with him after her release from prison. Well, yeah, I'm not shocked to hear that she was not 
aware of the way that he lived at home when she was in prison. Anyways, it says, we're told this caused tension for the couple in their two-bedroom apartment that they shared. Ryan allegedly collects and keeps food items in bulk, which, like I said, pandemic roll back around, you're going to want to be with somebody that stores food in bulk. However, Gypsy Rose Blanchard was not feeling this. Gypsy told people around her that Ryan's hoarding behavior reminded her of her late mother, Dee Dee Blanchard. I don't know. I'm like, if my, like, if I come across an older lady that, like, smells really strong, like, cigarettes, I'm, that reminds me of my granny. You know what I'm saying? Um, I, it'll kind of make me a little sad in a sense because my granny's gone, but I'm like, oh, that reminds me of my granny. If my mom, I don't know. If I, li I don't know. I, but is it, is that kind of strange? Like, your husband does something that your mom did? But I guess when your mom is somebody like Dee Dee and you went to prison for an alive and your mom, then I guess it's a different type of scenario. I do know that YouTube is being weird because it's being weird. Um, it's not sending out notifications. Um, a while ago, I had a hard time even getting on. So I do apologize for that, you guys. So yeah, she, tore, she told sources around her that his hoarding ways bothered her because it reminded her of her mother, Gypsy. Uh, nope, Diddy, of her mother, Diddy. It says, we're told Gypsy was especially bothered by Ryan's fridge as it was filled with a bunch of old food items that needed to be thrown away. And when he wasn't home, that's exactly what Gypsy did. She cleaned his fridge out. And I, listen, let me go in after work and Ryan, Ryan Sean's done cleaned out our refrigerator. I'm like, praise God, hallelujah. I ain't got to do it this weekend. However, when Ryan discovered the clear, cleared, cleaned out fridge, he was not happy. And one source says that that sparked a huge, huge argument, which left Gypsy feeling shaken. She found it scary that he got so worked up about the fridge and her cleaning it out. That made me wonder, like, was there something in the fridge that she, like, he was trying to hold on to and he was upset that she'd thrown it away? But I know in my freezer, um, we keep a fish. It's the first fish that Eli ever caught. So we keep it wrapped up and it's put up. And like if I came home and Sean threw it away, I'd be like, Sean's done that before. Like I've come home and he hasn't went through clothes and he's thrown away some of my clothes that I wanted to keep. And I'm like, what? I've had to like dig stuff back out because I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, I haven't seen you wear that in forever. And I'm like, it doesn't mean I don't want it. So that's the only way I feel like it would really make sense. But hey, different strokes for different folks. And maybe he wanted to eat the food later. Or maybe there was something in there that should have been significant, that was significant to him. I don't know. Either way, that's not it. That's not it, okay? That's not the only thing that the couple butted heads about. Gypsy Rose Blanchard also struggled with Ryan's snoring. I don't know. Like these are things that, like, first off, if listen, no matter who you marry, nine times out of ten, they may snore. Um, but second, like, you married a man that has been a bachelor for years and years and years, lived on his own. You gotta change some things up, you know. And if he threw that big of a fit, I would it might will be a red flag, but I would also be like, listen, we're not living this. I can't live this way. I can't live like that. And if you are that bothered by it, then we need to rethink this. You know what I'm saying? But like the snoring, like I, I don't know, like some of these issues, I'm like, when I read this and it's like the cluttered fridge, the food hoarding, the snoring. I'm like, those are just like very minor things that she would probably have to deal with with anybody else, with, with any other guy. You know what I'm saying? So I'm wondering if this article is accurate. There's got to be something else. There's got to be something more. However, I'm not done. Um, 
So the snoring was a problem, which made it difficult for Gypsy to sleep. Listen, my, my husband don't snore. He growls. He grunts. He sounds like a bear. He makes all kinds of noises. He quits breathing at times, and I have to nudge him. I'm like, breathe. He makes all kinds of noises. But either way. Gypsy also allegedly told loved ones that Ryan's kind of a human furnace. Running very hot at night. And she likes to sleep in a cool bed. Even the article says it might seem kind of trivial, but when you add it all up, it was just too many life adjustments for Gypsy. And that's what I think it is. As a woman that's been married for like over 15 years, those are like, what? That's Is that it? Like, is, is there anything else? Because that seems like not even remotely enough reason to end your marriage and leave your husband, right? But I think for Gypsy, somebody that's never lived a normal life, it was not good for her, right? Yeah, I guess. So yeah, Gypsy and Ryan were married almost two years, but she was incarcerated pretty much all of that time except three months. They split three months after she was released from Missouri's Correctional Center, where she served seven years behind bars for conspiring to unalive her mom. She announced the breakup in a private social media update and then filed for divorce. Since then, she's reconnected with her ex-fiance, Ken Urker, but they claim that they are just friends. She has also filed for a protective order, and she has filed for alimony. So, um, in the filing for alimony, she also is requesting that he cannot file for alimony against her. Or she's filing for what they call spousal support. So, she wants spousal support from him. Um, yeah, my husband snores like there is no tomorrow. I mean, he is in there... It ain't cutting logs. He's like, I don't even know. It, there's so many sounds. I see uh, you sent me a message about this earlier. I'm, where did you send it? I'm, I missed it. Um, so, yeah, I was shocked. And I was like, this cannot. There's got to be something else. I mean, if Ryan really just, he came home from work. And opened the fridge and saw that you cleaned it and just slammed it and went on a rampage. What are you doing? Why did you? Then I would definitely be like, red flag, couples therapy, like something. That, 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 why are you so angry right now? This doesn't make sense. You can't be this angry because I cleaned our fridge. I watched an interview on the Bile Files with Gypsy and Ryan where he said that he told Gypsy, this hair is your, this house is your house. Like, he said whenever she came home, he had his closet and it became her closet. And he said in the interview, he said, but that was okay. He said, I had a little space, you know, for her in the closet, but she came home and she took up the whole closet and that's okay because I can use the, the closet in the other room. And he said, Gypsy wants to redo our kitchen and that's fine because I told her, this house is your house. You do what you want to just like it's your house. So I do like, if you told her all those things and then you went, you acted like irate over her cleaning out the refrigerator. Did you have a bad day at work that day? Like what was going on? I'm so confused because hoarding food, um, getting upset over cleaning out the fridge, him snoring and him being a human furnace at night. It's just not grounds for a divorce, you know? I'm a human furnace as well. Sean will tell you whenever I read this article to him, he was like, oh my God, he sounds like you because I am so hot all the time. The only places on me that are cold is my feet and my butt cheeks. Sometimes my nose, my nose, my butt cheeks and my feet stay cold, but the rest of me hot. Like Sean literally has like scoot away from me at night. Um, but yeah, I just feel like if you love your spouse and these are the only issues, you're not going to leave. So I, I feel like there has to be something more. But I was telling my husband, I was like, listen, when you live through COVID, uh, everybody buying up all the toilet paper, you know, listen, hoarding food might not be a bad idea as long as it's canned, bagged, not takeout, still in the styrofoam container, pushed to the back of the refrigerator. That's not going to do any good. Um, also, being a human furnace, listen, live a day when you lose power because 
the weather was terrible and it was freezing cold. That's happened here like twice where a storm came through, it was freezing cold and we were without power. I mean, one time we all bundled up in the living room and you're going to be thankful on those cold nights with no power that your hubby is a human furnace because you can just cuddle up to him and be warm. So it can work out to your advantage if you allow it. But I'm like, there's got to be something we are missing. You don't ask for a restraining order just because your husband got a little irate over the refrigerator, right? That's what I think. I think getting out of prison and living with someone who had their own, like, set in their ways, had, you know, ran things their own way, and Gypsy had to... She couldn't just come out and do what she wanted and just be free for a while. She had to come out. She had to get right to work, basically, with all these press tours and then come home. And her husband, Ryan, went right to work. So they couldn't just be out and about doing whatever. You know, they were limited to, to because he had to be in bed to get him to go to work. And so, yeah, I just think it wasn't the best idea. I don't know. I don't know. Guy walks into a bar. I don't know. Um. I don't know, but you want to know what's crazy? I was like, oh, oh, sorry. I was over on Ryan's page and like, I literally saw people commenting like, um, hey, we should go out on a date. And I was like, you know, I watched an interview where Gypsy was talking about how a lot of men had hit her up. A lot of like thousands of men had hit her up in prison, writing to her, wanting to be with her. And then the interviewer asked Ryan, well, how many women have hit you up since then? He said, oh, I don't know. I don't know. And Gypsy was like, no, you know. She's like, he's had some hit him up. And I'm like, I wonder if this, Ryan, being with Gypsy, has brought some female attention for him. I don't know. Maybe it will work out in his favor. I've heard that, Julia, that like uh, when you come up for parole, if you're married, it can be like a benefit to whenever they are considering you know, letting you out. So, yeah. So, yeah, that's wild. We're going to continue to keep up with this because I'm curious. I am curious if she's going to get an RO because if she does, that's going to tell us it was more than just him being a little irate. It doesn't look like his personality to be like some mean man, but looks are deceiving. You cannot judge a book by its cover, okay? So just because he looks like a big old cuddly teddy bear doesn't mean that he is. He could be mean behind that teddy bear exterior you know what i'm saying um so i'm gonna keep up with this you guys we're gonna anything comes out we're gonna be keeping up with this so make sure you are subscribed to the channel if you want to keep up with gypsy roses road ahead of her with this divorce with the docuseries that they're coming out with that's supposed to come out this summer i'll probably do recaps on that maybe some body language if i feel like i can um also yeah so that's that's that for this video. A couple of things. I did not go to Georgia for Mama June's court date today because they canceled it. I, I saw earlier today that somebody asked like, hey, you know, why did you not go to Georgia? They canceled the court date. That's why. And I did see somebody post that they have a court date for the 19th, this Friday. And a lot of people thought that the court date was moved from the 16th to the 19th. The court date for the 19th is just a status conference. It is only for the attorneys to come together to look at the calendar to find another date that will work well for them for this hearing. Now, to my knowledge, the hearing that will happen when it does happen will be for the judge to decide if Michael has the leg to stand on. Uh, the, from my understanding, I've t like I said, I talked to my friend who's a lawyer in Georgia, and I've tried to figure out kind of like, should I go for this hearing? And from my understanding, what will happen, the 19th is a status conference, not a big deal. But after that, when they finally do go to court, the first hearing will only be for the judge to hear Michael's argument of who he is, who he is to Caitlin, and if he legally has a right to fight for custody. And at that point, you know, he may say, yes, you have the right to fight for custody. And then it'll move forward. Or he will say, no, you don't. And if he says that, that's it. It's done. It's over with. June will continue to have custody over her. Um, so as soon as we get a new court date for that, I will let you guys know. And I still plan on going. Um, 
The 19th, the Chrisleys, they will have their appeals hearing, which I'm super interested in that. I considered going, but now I definitely can't because earlier today, right before the live that I did about Mama June, um, I got a text message letting me know that my son, Caden, his uh, grandpa passed away. And it's kind of a, it's not his blood grandpa, but it's when I was pregnant with Caden, my family, and I was very close to a lady that I call Granny Ann. I call her Granny Ann. She, um, she, the man that raised me, that is my stepdad, was my stepdad that raised me. Um, she's related to us through him. Um, so me and my sister Flossie become very close to Granny Ann. And when I was pregnant with Caden, she really took to Caden. She really took to me. And whenever I had Caden and had to immediately go back to work, she kept Caden for me. And Caden is her baby. Like everybody is like, oh my God, what is Caden going to do if something happens to Granny Ann? Like Caden and his Granny Ann are like this. At 16 years old, he still goes and stays the night with his Granny every other weekend. He'll be like, Mama, can I go stay the night at Granny Ann's house? He's very close to his Granny. And, um, who passed away was Granny Ann's husband that she's been married to for 12 years. So Caden was in their wedding. This is like his grandpa, basically. Now they're not blood related, but Caden doesn't have a granny. I mean, he does, sorry, um, that he's this close to, even my mom. Like even my mom, who is close to all of my kids, this granny for Caden is, he's closer to her than he is any granny, okay? So, um, this is like his step grandpa, basically. Um, so yeah, that's who, when I got on the live earlier today and I was like, oh my God, you guys, sorry, I just got bad news. Somebody passed away. That's what it was. So I did the live, got off and me and Caden went to his granny's house and we were there for several hours and she was very upset. And she was like, you're going to have to come stay with me more, buddy. And then when we had to leave, uh, Whenever he told her, he was like, okay, Granny, I'm going home. She cried. So, so sad. Um, so if you guys don't mind, please, yeah, send prayers to my son, Caden, to his granny and um, their family. Because it's, I swear, it's just so many people have been passing away lately. I feel like it's like one thing right after the other. Anyways, um, like, share, subscribe. We're going to continue to keep up with the Gypsy Rose situation. And tomorrow, I don't know if I'm going to be working much tomorrow because... My sister for my birthday got me a massage gift certificate to a spa. And for Mother's Day, Sean decided to add to it and pay for our daughter Paris to get a massage so we could go together. So tomorrow, me and Paris will be going to get pampered at a spa. Shout out to my sister Flossie for getting that for me. She's okay. Um, we are having a get together at my aunt's house this coming Friday. And but now, um, the 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 wake for Caden's step grandpa will be this Friday. So I got to figure out if I'm not going to go to the party at my aunt's house or if I'm going to try to swing going to both. Um, but she's doing okay. We still haven't got the autopsy report back from my cousin, so we still don't know exactly, you know, um, how he passed. But anyways, I'll keep you guys up to date on that. Like, share, subscribe. If I am live tomorrow, it will probably be late tomorrow evening. So if anything happens and you're like, oh my gosh, is Elle going to go live? Well, you can email me to let me know, hey, this happened. I do have that. Some of my subs, you guys are the bomb. They have my email address. And when they see TMZ, the Ashley, the Sun post something, they grab the link or they screenshot it and they send it to me. And they're like, hey, have you seen this? Are you going to cover this? And I'm like, oh my goodness. And then I get right on it. So if you see something um, pop off and you want me to cover it, send me an email, let me know. Um, but if anything does pop off tomorrow, it will be tomorrow evening before I can get to it to cover it. But anyways, you guys, like, share, subscribe. We are going to get to 100,000 subscribers this year. We're going to do it. We're so close. I can taste it. So help your girl out. If you're not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye, guys.